Phoebe Hansjuk's death was as baffling as it is horrendous. December 2nd, 2010, and this is the last time the 24-year-old is seen alive. Seven hours later, her body is discovered in the refuse room on the ground floor of her apartment block, having fallen 11 flights through the building's garbage chute. I couldn't believe it. I still struggle six years. I struggle to believe that Phoebe's dead. One phone call and mum, Natalie Hansjuk's life, was shattered forever. Our family, it will never be the same. My other children, their, li their lives will never be the same. Do you remember the words that were used to tell you that Phoebe had died? Something like, Dad, I've got some horrible news for you. Phoebe's dead. It was just something as simple as that. For Lorne Campbell, Phoebe's grandfather and a retired police detective, the news Phoebe was found dead in a garbage chute made no sense at all. So when you're told information like that, what's the conclusion that you jump to? To me, right from the start, someone's put her in there. With the intention to do what to her? To kill her. After all the fear, the fighting, after all, strength gave way to final rest. Just three months before her own death, Phoebe spoke at her grandmother's funeral. Never faltered in generous death. Here, reflective and sombre, she was better known as mainly vibrant and cheeky. When she walked into a room, it was all eyes on her. She had something, yeah. But for all her beauty and charm, Phoebe was also plagued by self-doubt and shyness, which she sometimes soothed with too much alcohol and party drugs. It was a short but intense and, you know, dynamic life she led. And it had its ups and downs and she, she drove it like she stole it. She stole it at full speed. Yeah, she did. At the time of her death, Phoebe was living here at the prestigious Valencia building in Melbourne with her partner of two years, 43-year-old Anthony Hample. He's from a prominent legal family. His father is a retired Supreme Court judge and stepmother a county court judge. But Anthony made his name running an events management company. At home though, his relationship with Phoebe was rocky. The pair had split four times in the six weeks before her death. She was conflicted. She was, she was trying to get away from a relationship that she wasn't totally happy in. She had quite strong feelings for the fellow she was with, but at the same time she recognised that it was going nowhere and she, was, she wanted to get out of there. On Thursday, the 2nd of December 2010, Phoebe was still sleeping when Anthony left for work at 9am. The first and last anyone sees of her is when a fire alarm at 11.43am has the entire building evacuated. But it's a false alarm, and she returns to the building seven minutes later. For the next six hours, no one sees or hears from Phoebe. Something bad happened. That's really, I think something bad happened up there. Just after 6 p.m., security swipe records show Anthony arriving home. Her handbag and keys are on the bench, but there is no sign of Phoebe, despite plans for her and Anthony to head out to dinner with her father. There are two glasses on the table and shards of broken glass on the floor. The apartment was a terrible mess. It was never a mess. It looked most of the time as though nobody lived there. Later, police would find blood smeared on the door architrave, computer mouse and study desk. Anthony has now been home for an hour. Sometime between 7.06 and 7.09 p.m., the building's concierge makes an awful discovery. Phoebe's body is found on the floor of the refuse room. Around this time, 11 flights up, Anthony orders takeaway food for one. 
When it arrives, he's told there are police at the front of the building. He heads downstairs to report Phoebe missing. It was an unusual scene. It seems to me that there was enough uh, evidence to suggest that something had gone on in the apartment before she went down the chute. I think perhaps there could have been an accident. There could have been a, a um, some sort of confrontation and, and yeah, it might have been a panic situation. I, d I really don't know. But it appears the police were convinced almost immediately that Phoebe ended her own life. There seems no other explanation for the inexcusable gaps in their investigation. Certain that Phoebe was dead, they refused the paramedics' request to check her for signs of life. And so Phoebe's actual time of death could never be determined. They failed to collect all the CCTV footage from the building, which had the potential of capturing anyone else involved in Phoebe's death. And they neglected to seize her phone and the computers in her apartment, not bothering to look there for clues. They didn't even test the blood they found on the computer mouse. How would you describe that investigation? Um, inadequate. And what do you think the cost is of that inadequacy? The cost is that we we don't have evidence that we could, we might have we might have that might help us with answers that we'll probably never have. Among many, the most vexing question for Natalie and Lorne is how Phoebe physically climbed into this tiny space, feet first and apparently unassisted. A concern not shared by police. Dealing with the the loss of your granddaughter, does being a former police officer make it? Easier or more difficult, do you think? I was aghast at the things that have been not done properly. I mean, if you walked in there as a policeman, you would certainly be thinking, this is one out of the box. And you would, wouldn't be thinking, we're going to write this off as a suicide. You'd be thinking, we're going to look at every corner of this. The most heartbreaking detail for the family was learning Phoebe actually survived the 30 metre fall down the garbage chute. But with her right foot almost completely severed, she bled to death in a dark and locked room over the next five to ten minutes. It's a pretty lonely way to die. Mm. There's nothing nice about any of this, is there? No. And she obviously, she obviously fought to get out of there. It's not really the sort of thing that a person who intent on killing themselves, either accidentally or... I wouldn't do that. But she was a fighter. What did that room tell you about her fight in those last minutes? Well, there was blood all over. She'd crawled... Her, she'd pulled herself right around the room, trying to find a way out, presumably. She didn't just lie passively on the ground and wait to die. She was trying to get out of there. Adding to the mystery of how and why she ended up in the garbage chute, Phoebe's autopsy revealed she had a blood alcohol level of 0.16, three times the legal driving limit. She'd also taken one or two Zolpidem, commonly known as Stilnox, the sleeping tablets increasingly linked to unintentional bad or bizarre behaviour. Being affected by alcohol, and sleeping tablets in the way that she most likely was. Yeah. Is there any chance in your mind that she was in some sort of delusional state, that she did in fact somehow put herself down that chute with no intention of killing herself? She may have been in a delusional state, but she still have to have the, the physical coordination to actually perform the feat. I don't, no one seems to really get that. It was up to the coroner to decide what had happened to Phoebe. Suicide, an accident, or homicide? Or, as his own assisting counsel had recommended, he could have made an open finding, meaning police would be able to reinvestigate the case if they received new information. Instead, Coroner Peter White controversially ruled Phoebe's death was an accident, that the alcohol and still knocks had impacted on her mental state in such a way, it directly led to her entry into the chute. So as a family, to hear the finding, what was that like? Well, we were shell-shocked. We were numb walking out of that place. 
numb. We were numb. The way that it is at the moment is that no one else was involved in Phoebe's death. She put herself down the chute accidentally. It's just like a case closed. And we don't believe that that, that happened. Why would anyone want to put Phoebe down that chute? It is a good question. Why, why, why would anyone? It's a very unusual way, um, almost impossible, I think, to accidentally put yourself down there. But it's quite a good way to dispose of some, someone, if that's what you wanted to do. Coming up, the telling experiment, testing the chute theory. Someone affected by that level of alcoholic intoxication. Couldn't pull that off. Do whatever you have to do to get into this. And sleep experts revealing opinion. It shouldn't have been a death by accident. We're the cause of death. Oh, the comments are interesting. For the past six oh, years, Natalie Hansjuk and her dad, Lorne Campbell, a retired policeman, have tried to find out what they believe really happened to their beloved daughter, and granddaughter Phoebe. There's no question mark, there's no... They've poured over evidence they've independently collected. From the last sighting of Phoebe, captured here outside her apartment on CCTV footage... Just trying to see how I can get my... ..to re-enacting her inconceivable final moments climbing into a garbage chute. It feels like we haven't got the truth about what happened, what really happened, and we don't have any justice for Phoebe. Either. So that's that's hard. It was a death like no other in Australia. Somehow Phoebe got into the chute's tiny opening and then fell 11 floors. She bled to death after landing in the refuse room. Uh, the first time we came here was to um, to identify Phoebe when. Well, after she died. As awful as that was for you, how important was it to see Phoebe for the last time? Oh, it was very important because, as I said, I, I, I wouldn't believe it till I saw it. It just was, no, 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 I, she's not dead. She's not dead. Adding to the torment is the coroner's finding that Phoebe's death was an accident, a finding linked to the cocktail of alcohol and still knocks found in her system. But it's a ruling the family believes is based on inconclusive evidence and is physically impossible. I knew that uh, someone affected by that level of alcoholic intoxication couldn't pull that off. Using a replica of the shoot in Phoebe's building, Lorne wants to prove his point. Do whatever you have to do to get into this. Really try hard to climb into it. When you see it like that, it's very small, isn't it? I feel like I need to help you. <laughs> Viv, Phoebe's close friend and her match in height and size, struggles, even though completely sober. What are you finding difficult at this point? Um, just trying to see how I can get my body in. The With the weighted door to the chute over a metre off the ground, the opening a mere 36 and a half centimetres and nothing to hold on to, it takes a great degree of determination to even sit in it. <sighs> what a mission. And once in, it's incredibly difficult for Viv to manoeuvre her entire body into the throat of the chute. Um, it's really squashing like the... It's a bit of a... Are you all right? It's a tight squeeze to get in. Yeah. Watch it. Oh, God, you're amazing. Oh, I just don't want you to get hurt. No. Of course, sweet. Okay. Oh, yep. Jesus. Well, we've helped, which we shouldn't have done. Well, but... she was going to get injured if we didn't. Yep. Stand up for us. Four steps this way. I just don't believe that anyone could possibly do it under the influence. If you're if you're a point one six, there's no way you'd be able to handle that balance aspect of it. I just see that as being a, an amazingly complicated physical feat. You OK? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse this question, but the exertion that we saw you apply to getting in there, none of that was made up, was it? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> no, I really, it's <laughs> give it a go. No, no. Yeah. But you weren't trying to prove a point. No, um, I was. It's really hard to try keep my balance. It's because there's nothing to latch onto. Do you think that she was similar to you in terms of her ability to climb? Yeah, pretty similar. But I know myself. If I've ever been drinking, I'd be falling over. So, so what are you saying happened? Well, I'm, I'm saying that I believe someone put her in there. Do you know who that person is? No, but I, I've always had suspicions about it, but um, nothing that I can prove. But according to the coroner, Phoebe could do it, even affected by still knocks and alcohol. His belief is she dropped and broke a glass in her apartment. As she was putting the shards into a plastic bag, he surmised she cut herself, a conclusion he came to from the blood found in her home. The coroner says Phoebe dumped a bag of rubbish down the chute, even though it was never recovered. Relying on her so-called enthusiasm for climbing, Coroner White says at this stage, in a sleepwalking or confused state, Phoebe got into the chute feet first and without any awareness of the danger, began to climb down towards the ground floor before plunging to her death. He ruled it wasn't suicide or murder. I don't agree with the finding. I, I don't think it was a fair finding at all. I believe that she was put into the chute by someone else. Then who do you believe that person to be? I don't know. I don't know who, who, who that would be, but I don't think she's done that to herself. Interestingly, for a finding based on sleepwalking, the coroner didn't think it was necessary to call a sleep expert at the inquest. Dr Anouk Desai is a sleep physician. It is surprising. They had three experts there all along the realm of toxicology and forensic, but no sleep physician, no sleep expert. So very surprising um, from my perspective. I would argue it's an omission. Um, Dr Desai now, assessed that, though, the levels of alcohol and still knocks found in Phoebe. He says there could have been one of two side effects. Either she was physically incapacitated or her ability to get into the chute was actually enhanced by a delusional determination. But the point is, it's impossible to judge either way, which you'd imagine might lead to an open finding. So it either makes her less capable or more confused and more disinhibited. And I really think it could go either way. And that is the real mystery here. Um, which way did it go? What actually happened? And I, I don't think I can answer that. Well, do you think the coroner can answer that? I don't think you can say definitely, no. It could go either way. I would say the medical evidence alone does not support a firm conclusion. And if the argument is that the other evidence is as inconclusive as the medical evidence, can a finding be made that this death was by accident? Well, if the other evidence is inconclusive, then I would argue that it, it shouldn't have been a death by accident. Rain or shine, but usually on a Friday, Natalie would meet Phoebe here at her favourite coffee shop. I mean, I'd imagine then the conversations here, maybe even at this table, were varied. I guess there were the happy chats and sad yes. chats. And yeah, and funny. There was, so there was laughter, there were sometimes tears, there were um, confessions. It was a very uh, important thing that we did together. So is it hard for you to come here or, is, or do you like to do it, to relive those times? Um, it's a mix. Sometimes I've come here and cried. Um, but other times I feel, oh, I'm just so lucky to have had those. That's precious, you know, little yeah. moments here. But of course I feel sad. Yeah, of course. Of course. So, so, you know, I won't have them again. Despite the coroner's findings, Phoebe's death remains a terrible and confounding mystery to her mother and the rest of her family. If they could find grounds for it, their only avenue would be to appeal to the Supreme Court. But with a very slim chance of success, and at $50,000 a day, they can't afford the risk. That doesn't mean, though, they've given up on what they consider real justice for Phoebe. I don't have a whole lot of uh, faith, I guess you'd say, in the, in the legal system. But I do have hope that, uh, that the truth will come to the surface because I think it always does. 
So despite all the fighting that we've done, um, has, it, it feels as though it's come to nothing, except that I think that something, it will, the truth will come out. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.